But essentially, you want to have the inside how your addiction or addictive behavior or addictive impulses, even if you're not someone that easily acts on them or that is completely taken over by them, even if you have a great degree of control or self-discipline in that regard, you can still notice that you have addictive impulses or patterns. Essentially, we all do. At least that's my conviction. I do. And part of this is programming. Like we, we could make a distinction here between psychological addiction that comes from trying to fill a lack-based perspective, a whole, in your own view, and trying to fill it up with experiences from the outside or trying to avoid having to look at it. So that's mostly what we're talking about, I think. But there's also the addic addiction, the side of addiction, which is genetic in a way. And by that, I don't mean like, oh, you're either addicted or you're not. You're born that way. I don't mean that. I mean, we're all DNA-wise or genetically, let's put it that way, hardwired to want to sleep, to want to survive, to want to have food, to want to procreate, to want to dream and envision and expand. And so we have physiologically as well, certain impulses um, that have an addictive quality to them because they're continuously sought out. But that's not really the, the addiction that we're talking about so much. Mastering or controlling or allowing in a balanced fashion these impulses to coexist, these sort of more animalistic addictive impulses driven by hormones and genetics and so on and so forth, um, comes with time as well if we just get this other part of addiction right, if we understand this. So the more relevant part of addiction or aspect of addiction to talk about here briefly is this incessant seeking, it, it is already seeking, uh, to be addicted is to seek. Otherwise, you wouldn't be addicted. You need seeking to be addicted. So you're seeking for something. This is important to recognize. So the aspect of addiction that we want to address here is the seeking for something that's not yet here. I don't have it, and I need it. It's a psychologically fueled. It's a lack believe fueled. We have a lack believe about something. I'm lacking this, or I'm lacking that. And thus then, our psychology, our thoughts, you know, when once I want something from something, that's why we said, I don't want anything from anything, it's to calm that down. But when we're agitated, especially when we're restless, if you will, uh, then our addictions flare up the most. When we're stress eating, you know, when we're stress seeking, when we're stress, whatever, stress relationship starting, stress dating, whatever it might be, stress working, stress company starting, all that stuff, stress meditating even. But good luck with that one. So especially when we're kind of heated, overheated, you could say, energetically, when we're stressful, it comes out the most, it's the least controllable, or it feels that way. But it's also the most obvious that we are seeking for something that we desperately believe we don't contain, that we don't have access to this. This is the primary insight to shift from addiction to harmonious seeking once again. doesn't mean that addicted Impulse never arises, but when it does, you take a deep breath, you relax, and you remember or say internally to yourself, I'm not addicted to anything. I'm just seeking for what I am. I'm just seeking for the wholeness that is me. I'm seeking for source. I'm seeking for something beautiful that I deserve, that is real, and that for all intents and purposes, I should be seeking. I'm seeking something that I cannot stop seeking no matter how hard I try. I'm not an addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm a diehard seeker of God. I'm a diehard seeker of truth. I'm a diehard seeker of liberation. And I've just expressed this in ways that are not that healthy for me, that are not supporting me. But I can change that. But I'm not going to change what I am, and I'm not going to change that I seek. For the fact that I seek is the impulse of source itself calling me back into greater clarity to the true nature of what I really am, so that I may reap the inherent benefits of this state of consciousness. Call it peace, call it love, call it being mind blown, heart open, cosmic bliss, fulfillment, empowerment, clarity, skillfulness. Guys, there are so many qualities that will stream into your system later, the more you continue to access this. And not all of these can be described adequately. You quite literally 
become something other than human. You quite literally become something other than human. Something bigger, something beyond it, something truer, something more eternal, something that no longer suffers when the body suffers, that no longer suffers when the mind suffers, something that won't die when the body dies, something that doesn't get ill when the body gets ill, something bigger than an ordinary human state of consciousness and the assumption of being, a skin filled with flesh and blood. It's just not what you are. It's not the aliveness, the existence that you can feel right now. The existence, the intelligence, the cleverness, the mystery that's hearing my voice, that power to know, that's not a chemical reaction. That was there before the chemical reaction. It's that which witnesses even the chemical reactions that produce different states of consciousness. But the power to know, how could a rock ever grow into that? How could water ever grow into that? How could fire ever grow into that? Elementals, materials, substances, chemicals, electrons, they cannot produce the power to know, the power to exist and to know that you are. The power of awareness is an emanation of infinity. It's infinity that became aware of its own nature and then began to express itself in form in all these different ways, all the way down to this construct of a human self within a human civilization on a defined planet within a certain dimension of exploration, within space and time. This illusion has condensed itself to something so precise so that it's made to seem so real, but it never is actually independently real. What's real is this aliveness, this principle of consciousness within you. And it goes deeper than just consciousness. But there are no words for that. I call it the absolute sometimes. Intelligent infinity, the incomprehensible wholeness. That's what you seek. You're not an addict, my friend. Nobody is addicted. Not really. Everyone's acting addicted. But it's because everyone's a seeker. And some people are seeking harder than other people. And so they may grab for the bottle more easily. It doesn't have to be that way. You can be a hard seeker and still have self-discipline in those regards. It's very possible too. But either way, you're a hard seeker <laughs> or a diehard seeker. That's why you're here. You're interested. You're curious. Some of you might just be starting out this, this journey in this way, so consciously, so verbally. But some of you I know have been on this similar path for 30, 40 years. You're a diehard seeker. Respect. You know what you are. You're not an addict. You might have distortions. You might have imbalances. You might have chemical imbalances. You might have a less than ideal diet, less than an ideal hormonal situation. You may have your weaknesses, but you're a diehard seeker and you stay with this and you're on this path and you're getting clear by the day, especially now that we're connected here in this way. It's going to speed up this whole thing. Anyway, sorry for the rant here, but that's all to say that you are a seeker. And this is a beautiful thing. I'm not saying you should continue to be addicted in your behaviors and just tolerate that. No, make the changes you need to make. But the thing is, you can't do that from a place of self judgment, because you're going to rebound, you can do that. You can't do that from a place of restriction, if you're not already used to consistently little by little restrict yourself in the ways that are harmful to you. This can be practiced, but it takes consistency over many years to become self-disciplined. You can't overnight become self-disciplined. However, you can overnight have an insight shift. And that insight shift can make a massive difference on your life. Something that control and discipline can never replace, can never trump. So I want you to go this route, accept your addictions. Don't tolerate them. Not do your best to keep them in check. However, don't overly try to restrict it. Don't go at the route of, of restriction and force because you're going to rebound. Most people are going to rebound. Instead, seek a different insight. Reframe yourself. The 13th step of AA would then be, I realize I've never been addicted. I was just a diehard seeker for source. That's the 13th step after the 12th step. 
you know, because it all starts with, ah, hello, I'm fucking addicted and I will never change. And I'm an alcoholic for now and for the rest of my life and into my next 10 million lifetimes, I'm still an addict. Thank you. I'm, I'm so miserable. I'm such a loser. Happy to be here. Let me share. This works for a while, but this doesn't work after a certain point. Okay. The 13th step, the final step, which should be the first step is I'm not an addict. I'm seeking for something that's more true than any of you can give me. I'm seeking for something that's more true than anything that I could ever experience with my tongue, with my skin, with my eyes, with my ears, with my sense of smell, with my emotions. I'm seeking for the real source of life. I'm seeking for that real clarity, that real empowerment. I'm not an addict. I'm a seeker. That should be the first and 13th step, perhaps the only. So how can one effectively change addiction into seeking? Reframe it, reframe it, reframe it until you see yourself as a beautiful seeker of truth. Call it God, call it source, call it intelligence, call it beyond the matrix, whatever you will, call it the I am, call it your truth self, capital S. It doesn't really matter what you, how you symbolize this. But you're all here because you're seeking something other than what you have right now. You're seeking deeper access, deeper liberation, clarity, revelation. And it's going to happen, my friends. You're going to find that right here, right now. That's what you're seeking. Reframe that. Then everything else will follow. You will see the addictions will start to rapidly fall away. Because you've now re-owned yourself. You've re-loved yourself. Instead of saying, I'm an addict, I can't stay away from the bottle. You're saying, I'm a beautiful, fucking amazing seeker. Of course, I'm a little imbalanced. Of course, I have these distortions. Of course, I mess myself up many times throughout my life. Because I'm desperately seeking for the truth. And that is a beautiful thing. So you change self-hatred to self-love and to confidence. And this empowerment alone of having reframed this is going to change your life. And it's going to make these addictive behaviors and impulses fall away by the bunches because the moment these impulses arise, they now have to content with your new background conviction that you are not an addict, you are a seeker of truth. And so when the impulse arises, like, oh, I want this again, I want to grab for the bottle, I want to grab for the sex, I want to grab for the connection, I want to grab for the validation. You start to recognize because you've, you've anchored in this background of conviction of what you really are, this beautiful expanded view, the true view of what you are, which is a seeker of God, a child of God, a seeker of God, and a becomer of God. You will become more of God throughout this trajectory. That's my guarantee. If you listen earnestly, you will understand in a balanced fashion, you will not become a distasteful, delusional, crazy wacko. Of course, you could still choose to be that way. That's not my responsibility, though. <laughs> uh, my part is to help you get super clear on what you are and help you gravitate closer to that God state so that you become the creator more and more in what you are. So once you've reframed that, there is self-love. And when there's self-love, what happens to your addictive behaviors? They now have to contend with this wall, this waterfall of self-love and clarity as to what you really are, this reframed perspective. I'm a seeker of the creator. That's a beautiful thing. I'm not, nothing is wrong with me. I just have misplaced this seeking. But now that I've remembered, how can I continue to be addicted in the ways I was before? Now you can line up that addiction to seeking purely, truly, and effectively. 